there are a lot of distributions out there. That's one of the truest things that I've ever said. And it shouldn't then be surprising that I quite often come across distributions that I've just never heard of before. And usually when I see these distributions, I ask, what the f*** is that? And, well, the one that we're looking at today is another one of those distros. I've never heard of Q4OS before. Now, there's a possibility that this is a very popular OS and I've just been living under a rock. Or perhaps I've found a hidden gem. Who knows? One of the things that you should know about this series is that I do some research beforehand, but not a lot. I want to kind of keep a fresh mind going into it. And unless the website that I find for the distribution is absolutely atrocious, I try not to judge it too harsh before I go in. Now, that isn't always something that I succeed at. Sometimes I start judging things based on the look and feel of it before I've even used it. That's just human nature. But I try to at least keep an open mind. So hopefully you will too. So this is going to be a look at Q4S. So the first thing we should do is take a look at the website. Now, the first thing you should know about Q4S is that it's based on Debian 11. And if you're thinking what I'm thinking is that there's a lot of Debian based distros, well, that's true. Now, it comes in two different flavors running Plasma and something called the Trinity Desktop. Now, I've heard of the Trinity Desktop before but I've never actually used it before. So this is going to be an experience because we are going to try out the Trinity desktop today when we get to installing this. I first downloaded the Plasma version because I was just like, I'm comfortable with this. I don't want to look at something new, you know, also lazy. Uh, but the download said it was going to take 16 hours. So it just turned out it was easier just to download this Trinity desktop one. And so we're going to look at that. So the website is not the greatest, not the worst that I've ever seen. One of the things that I noticed being someone who writes for a living is that they didn't capitalize the first letters of their sentences. At least not all of them. It's very inconsistent. It's, I don't understand that. I don't want to be a nitpicker, but I edit stuff for a living, so I noticed that right off the bat. <laughs> like, I don't know why. It's really weird. Uh, it, it seems to be a, de a design decision, though. Something Because they've, they've done it in every single paragraph. And then they go on to actually capitalize stuff but honestly doesn't matter I'm, again open mind so other than that on the website you'll find a download page where you can find links to both the trinity and plasma versions of the live iso and an install cd it'll give you the minimal hardware requirements and one of the interesting things that it advertises and i've not had a chance to try this but i've looked at the documentation and it looks amazing is this thing right here called the Windows Installer. Now, apparently what this thing will do is that if you have Windows installed on your computer, you can download this. It will download the ISO of Q4OS. It will install it alongside Windows from within Windows. If that's true and it actually works, thank you, Firefox, for that. I, Firefox has just been doing that randomly. I don't know why. It's so weird. But anyways, if the Windows installer thing actually works. It's what I've been wanting Linux to do for absolute years. Because one of the hardest things to do, in my opinion, about Linux is actually install the damn thing. Because you have to deal with, you know, boot menus and UEFI and partition managers and all this stuff. Uh, before you even get to the installation process. If this worked, it'd be game changing. Now, the thing is, I don't have a, Lin a Windows partition or a windows installed actually tested on so if anybody has actually used that and know if it works leave a comment in the comment section below i'd love to know other than that you'll also find a section on documentation where they'll tell you some things about why you should choose q4os available applications the windows setup which is what i looked at earlier it'll take you through the setup for that windows thing uh it looks like it's like four steps it, which is just I mean, there's even a, like a video guide on YouTube. I didn't see that before, but if that works, man, just mind blown. Uh, right out of the bat. They also have some developer manuals and some stuff related to the Trinity desktop, which we might take a look at later if I get lost. Uh, they also have some requests for business supports and some stuff for developers here as well. So let's go ahead then and install this. There's more stuff here on the website. I will link that in the video description if you want to take a deeper dive into the stuff that they offer, including the release notes for their brand new release, which was released uh, just a couple days ago. So we're going to be installing this in a virtual machine and I have it all set up. Just I'm going to go ahead and yes here and we'll see how this goes. And once it stops grabbing my mouse, I will be able to make it full screen. One of the things I've never actually figured out is how to make Vert Manager full screen via key binding. Like I've searched on the internet for it. There doesn't seem to be one. Maybe I'm wrong, uh, but it seems you have to click the button. 
and when it's in a TTY or something, you can't click the button. There we go. Now we go. All right. Okay. So you may want to enlarge text and widget size to improve readability. Click OK to run a configuration tool for screen setup and scaling. I don't really care about scaling. It would be cool if this handled resolution. I don't. the The text seems okay for me, so I'm just gonna hit apply. That was a plasma uh, thing. You can tell by, or at least it used the breeze theme. Wait a minute. You, now that I'm thinking, about, like I told you before, that I've heard of the Trinity thing. Is Trinity the de the desktop that is based on Plasma Four? We're gonna go find out right quick. Give me a second. Okay, I was kind of right. It's KD Plasma, or it's KD three, not Plasma. Plasma obviously is five, but it's KD three that it is based on. Uh, so it, it's basically what GNOME three went with. You know what happened when they switched to GNOME three is that somebody decided they didn't like GNOME three, so they made Mate uh, and Cinnamon eventually. The same thing kind of happened here when KD four came out. Everybody hated it because it was god awful, and. Th Obviously, the Trinity is kind of like the continuation of KD3, which everyone seemed to like. So that's the reason why this actually looks quite familiar. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff here. Okay, so this is just the welcome screen. We'll actually take a look at this once we get installed. So let's go ahead and click on Install Q4OS and see what installer we get. This is the Calamari's installer, so this is very familiar. So we'll just run through this real quick. American English is fine. That is a, an appropriate time zone. That's an okay keyboard. And here we go. So we get a few selections for software. So Q4OS desktop, recommended for regular users, full feature desktop with web browser, office suite, and recommended application set. Install process could take a while as the installer needs to perform an extra configuration and cleanup. Uh, basic, for users who prefer a customizable desktop, the, the basic Q4OS desktop with common utility system tools and libraries, lightweight and slim, starting configuration for users who want to install desktop applications of their choice. So that's kind of like a minimal install. I'm assuming it comes with a desktop and probably nothing else. Uh, live, for those of you who want an identical system to the live media, uh, no additional software will be installed now. The live media environment will only be cloned into the target system, the most simple and quick installation way. I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to be. Like it will install in the hard drive, the exact thing is the live media or is this something you could probably maybe install on a like a usb key and have a persistent thing i don't know uh, and pure for experts on ultimate minimal desktop you will be free to set anything up by yourself uh, one thing i will notice from these things is that i would absolutely love a little bit more information on what that is and i'm not sure we'll go back to the website here for a minute and take a look at this and see if there is a like an explanation of what those four options actually are. A unique desk tool desktop option makes possible setting up multiple desktop environments. For instance, Plasma and Trinity side by side without interfering with each other, so you could run both of them. That's interesting. Uh, take a careful, thanks to the careful optimization, desktop environments are completely separated from apart from one another. They don't interfere themselves at all. Get the dual desktop set up by selecting Trinity or another supported desktop environment in the desktop profile or tool and install it easily alongside the default Plasma desktop using a one-click style guide. Once installed, you can switch back and forth between different desktop environments upon login. Just select the desired one at the login screen. Okay, so that, and then that's the Windows installer. So that doesn't say anything about what those different ones are. It may be here somewhere. A few moments later. Okay, I've taken a look here for, and I can't seem to find it. Now, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, that there's not more information on what those four things are, but I can't seem to find it. So we're going to go ahead and just choose the top one, which is the one that they recommend for people. But uh, I would really like more information on that stuff. They have a lot of space here. They could for sure offer at least a little bit more information. So like I said, I'll just choose the one here at the top. Hit next. Erase disk. No option here for choosing a different file system or anything like that. There is a, an option to encrypt, which we've seen this both there and not there in some installation mediums so uh, good that it's there we'll go ahead and next enter some credentials here with a very strong complicated password which i can't seem to type apparently that's beyond me uh, we'll leave that as it is and hit next and then install i'll cut the video here and come back when it's done okay that took about five minutes i'm going to go ahead and hit the restart button i'll hit done here Okay, so this is the Trinity Display Manager, for those of you who are interested. And I'm assuming this is also a relic from KDE3. 
Interestingly, you have to remember what your username was, uh, which is a good thing. I, I actually remember in uh, that strong and complicated password, obviously. So this menu here would probably allow us to switch between session types. Yep. So also we can restart the X server from here. Remote login, console login, and so on and so forth. That's pretty cool. We'll go ahead and hit login. I don't need to do that. What if, if we click X, it still comes up. Okay. One option for, you know, not having to open that window would be cool. But it's not that big a deal. So we'll wait for this to come up. And then the first thing we're going to do is search for display here. See if anything comes up. Nothing comes up. Okay. So the search panel there is not all that great. Let's look control panel then. And we'll look for display. I don't see a display there either. Sound and multimedia system administration. Date and time. Monitor and display. Okay. We kind of bury that. And you have to use a password in order to change the display resolution. Okay. Interesting. Resolution and layout. Okay. So apparently if you don't at this beginning you enable global display control, you can't actually change anything. So if this is unclicked, all this stuff here is grayed out. And if it is clicked, you can then change what the resolution is. So we're going to find 1920 by 1080, which would be up. 19, we're going to went too far. No, nope, we didn't go far enough. Well, that uh, really does work better as a, a, a drop down. There we go. Okay, and then hit apply and hit accept configuration. And hit, okay, so I have to say that of all the desktops that I've ever used, that's the most convoluted process of choosing a display resolution I've ever managed to see. So uh, I don't know whether or not that's just something that they've chosen that's new or that that's just the way KD3 worked. I don't actually think I ever used KDE 3. I'm pretty sure the last K the KDE I used before Plasma, I never used 4. I'm pretty sure the only KDE I used was probably like 2 something. Because that was back in 2002-ish maybe. So whatever was out in 2002 and that was very very briefly. That was back when OpenSUSE came with both GNOME and KDE installed on the ISO or CD, whatever. It was probably a CDRW at that time. Uh, but anyways, uh, back to reality here. Anyways, we can close the control panel now. And now we can take a look at this welcome screen. So we have a run desktop profile bu button, which will full feature desktop with web browser. This dialog lets you choose additional desktop environment. So yes, I want to install this shell DE, so you can choose. Oh, interesting. So you can actually choose other things other than Plasma. LXQt, XFC, LXDE. Notice not LXQt. Well, I, LXQt was right there, Matt. You're blinder than a bat, even with the glasses on. Uh, Mate, Budgie, Cinnamon, Gnome, and Trinity, which is already here. Uh, that's kind of cool, I have to admit. There's not a lot of desktops out there that will allow you install des other desktops. So the full feature desktop with web browser. So I'm not actually sure what this does. Software profile. So recommended for regular users. That's what the, why would you need this? I bet you this is for when you're actually still in the install, the live environment. Okay, that's cool. All right. I'm assuming that that's what that's for. If we click install now, a profile has already been applied to the system. Previous profile. If you continue, the selected profile replaces the previous one and system will be configured accordingly. So you could theoretically, if you want to choose a different one of these, if you chose wrong at the beginning because there was a lack of information, you could choose one of these. Interestingly enough, well, no, I was going to say that it looks like there's more, actually more information here than there was on that one screen we saw, but there's not. It's exactly the same from what I can tell. I wonder what would happen if we installed something like this. If we hit OK, nothing. OK, so if you'd, you can select the, the desktop environments you want and then select one of these and then install. So if I had actually gone into this during the pre, before I installed it and went through this, I could install other desktop environments and then install from here. Okay. If I close this, the welcome screen does come back up. Okay. So this is, let's click install application to see what we get here. So this is a custom software center of some kind. We we know it's very, very complicated and, and elegant because they spelled center like that. So let's see, from, from here you can install... Looks what looks like a quite a bit of software, which is nice. It does give you the like a rating system, which appears they all have a two, well no I was gonna say they all have a two dot rating, but that's not true. They have some other things that have a close to a, a ten rating, which is interesting. Surprisingly enough, Google Chrome has almost a ten dot rating here. Uh, <laughs> interesting. I wonder who rates those things. 
if we click on this, okay, so it does have a little check mark there that I missed that tells you whether or not the uh, applications are installed, and you can install your NVIDIA drivers from here. And then it gives you links to install the applications that you selected, which doesn't look like you can choose more than one at a time. No, not, at least not from here. There's a link to Synaptic Package Manager and the Desktop Profiler from here as well. Now, I wonder what would happen if you installed this stuff in the live environment. Would it carry those through? I'm not actually sure. I made the mistake in my last WTF video where some of the stuff that you did in the live environment actually would carry through, and I just thought it wouldn't, because it's very weird or very unusual for that to happen, but it did in in the last one. So I'm not sure how that would actually work here. I'm kind of regretting not going through the welcome screen beforehand, but I'm so used to saving the welcome screen for afterwards because the welcome screen for me is usually something that is meant to be looked at once you've installed the, the desktop environment or the, the distro. So we have a way to install proprietary codecs, turn on desktop effects. Do you want to turn desktop effects on? Sure. Desktop effects have been enabled. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but it probably wouldn't work in a VM anyways. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, set auto login, switch to kickoff start menu, which I wonder what that would do. So right now we're using bourbon. I'm assuming that's what that means here. So we should switch to kickoff and hit apply. Okay, so that's what the kickoff start menu looks like. So that is a very early predecessor to the kickoff menu that you probably have seen before in Plasma. So we'll hit okay there. And then let's see what the other one was, classic. And apply and that's just going to be like a little start menu thing okay cool that you can set it from there so there's more options here setup screen sc scaling which we saw earlier hardware info which is just going to be like the hardware info center interestingly enough that that, that uh, kde i believe plasma i believe bakes that into like the, the settings panel uh, documents online and donate okay so that is the welcome screen so initial impressions of Trinity Desktop is that there's a lot of icons on the desktop. Uh, and the wallpaper is not offensive. So that's actually not bad. So on the bottom here underneath my face, we got the clock. We have a icon volume button, the network button, applet. And I believe that's the clipboard tool. Yep, for clipper. Okay. And then on here we have pinned Conqueror, which is a web browser. Interesting that they have Conqueror pinned and not Firefox. They have Firefox installed. We see Firefox here. And then we have the Show Dex Desktop button. Okay, so moving on to let's go ahead and open up a terminal. So Control-Alt-T does not open up a terminal, which is disappointing. So we're going to Programs, Console. We all know Console. So we'll do, well, first we'll do Free-M to see what we're looking at in terms of memory usage, 392 megabytes. Now, I know that's not the lowest we've all seen. Like, there's some desktop environments out there that use sub-200, but that's impressive. For something that, for the most part, looks at least somewhat like KDE Plasma, I mean, there's obviously going to be a lot of differences because it's older, but it looks fairly modern. Like, there's nothing here that looks offensively old, like you'd expect something that was developed back in the... the mid 2000s uh, but you know that's actually really impressive so let's see if neofetch is installed it's probably not nope so first let's go ahead and let me run updates real quick sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade so interestingly enough zero updates so not bad uh, well now we'll do sudo apt install neofetch very easy to install neofetch now, it, we don't get a fancy ASCII art for this. It just shows that we're running Debian. And this is running kernel 5.10, which is appropriate for Debian. has 1,771 packages. Now, don't freak out about that. If, for those of you who care about packages, Debian counts their packages differently than like Arch does. So that's the reason why Debian always looks like it has, oh my god, so many more packages. But it's actually not true. This is using bash 5.1.4, which is a little older than uh, what I would expect the va the bash that I have installed on my system is 5.1.16, so it's not as far as back as I thought it was. I thought they were actually on 5.2, but then I don't use bash, so how would I know? Okay, so we this is the Trinity desktop using the Waterleaf icons with the Q4 OS 02 theme. This is the console terminal, obviously, and it says now it's using 405 megabytes, but NeoFetch always reports memory memory different than Free does. Okay, so. 
there are those two things. Now, let's go ahead and take a quick gander through the applications that are installed. So, accessories, we have, uh, oh, these are all categories. I'm going to find that welcome screen again and change back. If we right click on this and click configure, so we, unlike in Plasma, we don't have an option for alternatives here, which is a little disappointing. So let's see if we can find the welcome screen again. Programs, Synaptic, Mo Mozilla Firefox has its own category. Why does Mozilla F Firefox have its own category? That's a little weird, right? So these are actually aren't, that's a really weird menu, right? You start off at the top expecting these things to be categorized, right? In accessories, you have Office here and LibreOffice is here. And we have games. And then these are all, all this stuff is appropriately categorized. Very nice. But then here we have like LibreOffice is its own category in the main menu. And VLC, Synaptic, Thunderbird, Look Switchers here. Like I'm wondering if these are kind of like favorites instead of like actual categories, but everything else is under accessories. That's a really weird menu. I'm not sure why they have it like that. Uh, anyways, we'll just start here. Uh, and so uh, under development, we have the KRegX uh, X editor. I'm not actually sure what that is. Under our games, we have arcades, we have K-Bounce, so some like Solitaire and Minesweeper and stuff, basic games. Under graphics, we have Digicam, Gwenview, K-Snapshot for screenshot tool, Color Paint, which is a paint program, KUKA for scan and OCR programs, and LibreOffice Draw. Internet with Firefox, Kmail, Conqueror, and Thunderbird. So we have a little bit of overlap in terms of multiple types of programs covering the same thing. So we have two browsers, two mail things. I'm not sure why we have both of them. They should just make you know the choice, but it's not horrible. I've seen worse. Yeah, here in under multimedia, we have a KDE folder, which has SMTube, which is a YouTube browser for SM Player, Amarok, Clementine, KB3B, KREC, Pulse Audio Volume Control, that's Pavu Control, and VLC. Uh, again, there's quite a bit of stuff here that is kind of overlapping. So Amarok and Clementine are both media, like music players, and they're actually installed. I thought maybe they were like links to install them. Maybe that's why they were both here, but they're not. They're actually both actually installed. Okay, I, I'm not sure why they need to in install both of them. It's a little weird. I, I I have to admit, it's not it's not something that I haven't seen before. A lot of distros tend to do that, but it's something that you should know. Uh, under Office, we have K Organizer in the LibreOffice Suite and K P uh, PDF View for uh, PDFs. Science, we have LibreOffice Math Settings. These are just going to be like audio CD. We have the Control Panel, Firewall Configuration. Probably f this is like a front end for UFW. I'm assuming. Yep, this is powered by UFW, so that's really easy. I have made a video on UFW. If you're interested in that, I'll try to link that in the cards above. Probably won't get the timing right, though. I never do. Okay, so other than that, we have some system stuff. Super user. So we have Conqueror, Console, and Crus... Oh, wait, hold on. You have my heart. Crusader's installed by default. It's amazing. It's also kind of really slow. And... There's like a weird icon there that, show that shows that it's still launching, but really weird. Uh, but Crusader's installed by default. Oh, K Q4OS, my new daily driver. <laughs> That's uh, not, it's an interesting like Midnight Commander like theme, but you could easily change that. So we'll close that. I w it's interesting though that we don't, like if we go up here, back up here, go to systems, like do we see... Like, oh, so we can open Crusader without the, the super user. Wait a minute. When we opened up it as a super user before, did it ask for a password? I don't, I, I, my Alzheimer's is pick, is kicking in. So let's go back here. I'm very curious about that. Open up Crusader. It op opened up the super user Crusader without a password. Also, this is a much older version of, of Crusader, by the way. There's quite a bit of stuff here that the new versions of Crusader actually have. But this doesn't seem to have. But uh, it has the... the it has tab support, so that's uh, still okay. I would not use this menu system if I didn't, you know, have to because I don't see the welcome screen again. Let's see if we can find that welcome screen. System settings, control panel, welcome screen, wallet match. I don't actually see the welcome screen again. So I'm going to change that menu. Probably could do it in the, in the control panel. Let's see where the control panel is here. And let's go through some of this. So appearance and themes. Let's see what themes we have installed. We can't launch feedback. Look switcher. So this is the look switcher. So this is, we get Debonair Q4OS default slide, which is going to be 
a la like Windows XP, I'm assuming. Let's switch to that because, oh, you have to log out? Why not? Let's do it. I, I want Windows XP so bad, I'm just going to log out and we'll do it. Why not? Then it takes you back to a TTY <laughs> and not the display manager. Okay. Uh, I wonder if we're going to have to start X. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> we did have to hit start x that's fantastic and it didn't remember the display settings <laughs> okay uh that look switcher thing kind of broken i'm gonna have to admit to that that would scare a lot of people away oh <laughs> good lord <laughs> Oh, it's so good. I remember this menu. It, oh, the, the, the memories, the memories. Let's uh go back to the system control panel. Good Lord. Where is the control? Oh, it's under settings. So we got to go uh back. Where's the back button? Where's the um oh back button right there? Okay, uh settings, control panel, which is right there. It's changed the icons. Uh, and then if try to remember how I changed the so system administration. Modern desktop, this here, scroll all the way up here to 1920 by 1080, hit apply, kit accept, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> that is, <laughs> that's the best thing I've ever, that's the best thing I've seen all day. That's great. Interestingly enough, they didn't actually use the wallpaper because like, you could use the wallpaper. I don't think like Microsoft is going to sue you for using that wallpaper. I mean, it didn't stop them from literally copying the menu. Interestingly, you can rechange the size of this menu. <laughs> that, that's fantastic. Okay, let's open up Firefox and see what version of Firefox here. I'm guessing that this is going to be the ESR version of Firefox settings. Oops, that's the wrong thing I needed to do. I needed to go to, I needed to, go to help and then about. Uh, this is the, no, this is version 98. So this is not ESR. That's, that's pretty awesome because if you download a lot of different Debian based distros, you're going to get the ESR version. Uh, that this is not ESR. Now, this is not the most recent version of Firefox. 99 just came out, but the fact that you're getting something that's fairly recent, kind of cool. God, that theme, that just, <laughs> that's so awesome. Uh, like, I want, I think I want to run this. It's so good. If, I wonder if there's anything, let's go back to, like, we have, a, now we have a search box here. We can actually think for themes. If we type, type, search for themes, nothing there. What was that thing that, what was the thing called changer no what was it called like forget go to application system no it wasn't under there under settings look switcher okay here we go this is what was the other one they have they have spring which is uh like windows 7 i'm guessing a little windows 7 but also windows xp i'm not gonna find it oh and then we have a, the windows 98 version okay <laughs> in terms of like show all, wait wait all system themes will be listed. Keep in mind that some of them may be incomplete or under development might not be working expected. So there are some other things here that you can install. So the high contrast stuff is here. KD Classic, which looks like a KD. That's, that looks like the KD that I tried back in 2002 or whatever it was. Uh, Keramic, I'm not familiar with that. Plastic, I've seen that before. Platinum, all these are really, really old looking. Redmond, the, the default version that comes here the the, the Demonair one is really modern looking it's like it's basically breeze uh but the rest of these are really really old. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, okay that one down there doesn't look too bad the sunshine one uh i'm not gonna switch again but the, the so it has some themes we'll, we'll put it that way let's see what else can we take a look at so for the most part this panel along the side here is mostly useless i don't know if you can even see that on the side but that clock there is like a like a analog clock and it's really small good luck see, trying to see the time from that okay what else do we got here these are still the same as we had before the control panel was linked right there in front of my face by the way why didn't nobody you know tell me that i am so blind sometimes just i don't know anyways so that is Q4OS. Let's go ahead and wrap this thing up. We've been going for a while. From my very brief experience with this thing, I love that Windows XP theme. It just made me laugh. I don't think I. it's not usable, I don't think. But, I mean, if you really, really enjoyed Windows XP, it was kind of cool. I admit that it brought some memories back because I used the crap out of Windows XP. That was... Like I had tried window or I had tried Linux at one point for a very brief time in 2002 
Somebody handed me an open Sousa. It was actually probably Sousa at that point. A, D a DVD DRW, maybe it was a CDRW of Sousa. I installed it on my computer at that time, and it was fine, but it didn't have games, like very good games at that point. And obviously there wasn't very good games on Windows either, but there was at least a few things that I could do on Windows. And uh, so I ended up going back to Windows, and that was at that point I switched to Windows XP, and I used the crap out of that for a long time. So their XP theme here, very nostalgic. In terms of everything else, there's some things that are weird here and also some things that are kind of cool. I don't really know how well that dual desktop thing uh, really works. I didn't try that out. I'm assuming that that's kind of like the premiere feature. Probably really good, but I didn't want to go through and reinstall it. That's the thing. If I'd done the smart thing and actually went through the welcome screen to begin with, lesson learned. You know, I'll do that from now on uh, because... That's the second time a welcome screen has burned me by not going through it before the installation. I won't let it happen a third time. The switching of the themes that you have to log out is a little bit annoying. And the fact that it doesn't get you back into the display manager could confuse some people. So you have to know that StartX is actually a thing. And the, uh, it is cool that StartX at least works. If I if it hadn't worked, like because they didn't use like an, an X and an RC, RC thing, then I'm not actually sure how I would have gotten back into it without you know rebooting the computer or the VM in this case. I will say that there's a lot of duplicated software. So it comes with Dolphin, it comes with Crusader, both installed. Those are both very heavy applications for file management. And it also comes with two web browsers, two email clients. It comes with two music players, three if you count VLC. It comes, so it comes with two like, me, like movie players as well. So there's a lot of duplicated software in this desktop profile. So the one that at the beginning when we did the the installation where you got to choose from the diff different profiles, the one that says it's recommended comes with a lot of duplicate software. It doesn't really have to do that. I'm not sure why. I'm assuming that the reason why they include some of that older stuff, so like Crusader, which is the older version of Crusader and stuff, the Conqueror stuff and, and all that, I'm assuming they do that because... This is this desktop here, the Trinity desktop, is meant for people who are either nostalgic or really liked KD3. So those are applications that those types of people would actually be looking for. So I'm assuming that that's the reason why those are there. And then they'd obviously want to include something that's more modern and usable. At least th that explains things like Cru the Crusader and Dolphin and Conquer and Firefox. I don't know how they explain having two media players because neither one of those things are old both what was it, amarok and clementine both of those are still being in development so i'm not sure why i mean granted crusaders still in development too and conquerors still in development but they include all the versions i don't know it's a little confusing i'm sure there's more stuff that i could have gotten into but we're running into 45 minutes of record time here so we need to wrap this up you know desperately so anyways that is it for this video if you have comments on q4os leave those in the comment section below you can follow me on twitter at linuxcast you can support me on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast before i go i'd like to take a moment to thank my, these fine people robert sid devon patrick fred kramer Meglin, Jack Sam, Tool, Steve A, Sabrina Linux, Derek Samuel, KB, TGB, Mitchell, J Dog, Carbon Data, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, Andy, Ross, Eduardo, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Lee, Peter A, Crucible, Dark, Benefits, Primus, and PM. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.